Time now for your Premier League update. I'll tell you one thing. This division is never boring. Keeps Robbie Musto up last night. Probably keep him up again tonight. Robbie Musto, Tim Howard, Rebecca. Let's get straight to the Kenilworth Road highlights, shall we? Between Luton and Liverpool. And we're picking it up, Robbie, in the second half because really that's when a lot of things started to happen, especially for Luton. Yeah, it really was. And we talked at half-time about this guy, Bennett, going through and threatening down that side. He does well to get the ball across. Colton Morris, the Luton striker, number nine there. Just can't quite get enough purchase on the shot. There he goes right through the centre. Does well to, to get it across. And there, Allison does make a save there. He's very quick up his line to, to thwart Carlos, uh, Colton Morris. Miss of the day. Well, this yes. is this is the defining moment of the game, really. I mean, there's two misses. The first is bad. The second is horrendous. And, and, and Mo Salah here, he's definitely going for goal there, off the side of his head. And that's just I, hard to explain. That really is, at this level, you know, even professional level, that's such an easy chance. A, a, an awful miss that time from Darwin Nunez. Clock absolutely furious. A couple of minutes later, he had another look at goal with Nunez. Yeah, he does well there, Nunez. Look at that. Comes back. It's exactly what you want from him as a striker to come back and try and win the ball. This is a good strike. Obviously, a lot harder finish at this point. But, you know, that miss was just incredible. Corner to Liverpool. Possible handball from Ross Barkley. As they appealed it, yeah. the Liverpool players, Luton got the other end and scored. Yeah, and quality, by the way. Ross Barkley here. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Awareness. Quick look over his left shoulder. There's a man coming on, on towards me. I've got to release the ball. He does to Kabori on the, the right-hand side. And it's a good finish, you know, from Chong here. It's a good finish, Rebecca. Just watch the concentration here. He knows there's going to be a contact from Allison as he comes out. Focus. Make sure he gets good, solid contact on the ball, which he does with his left foot. And here's a look at that again. Ross Barkey there, you see, he does come off his tricep from Virgil van Dijk. There's the big appeal there. But his, his arms, are it's just for leverage. He's jumping, he's coming back down again. He does kind of turn away. I mean, it does strike his arm, but again, to, it, it, the ball can hit the arm and it not be a handball offence if, if the arm is in a position that you might expect it to be in given that motion. So goal given, on came Luis Diaz in the 83rd minute with plenty on his mind, Tim. Yeah, and, and Luton, all they need to do is clear the ball. They win the game, they just can't get it clear. Credit Liverpool for pressing, and it falls to Harvey Elliott. Just spins it around the corner, and Luis Diaz, it was written. He climbs a ladder. It's a really good header, I must say, for the substitute. Just smashes it home. Really good angle there for the message afterwards to his father. Freedom for my dad. Disappointing, of course, for New Luton Town to have led and then not taken away all three points. But they did pick up a point in the end as Carl Morris and Jurgen Klopp embrace. And Luton are just starting under Rob Edwards to pick up a few points at crucial times. And they are out of the bottom three now. Look at the way they started the season. Five games, no wins, just the one point with a minus eight goal difference scoring just three goals now in their last six games. Just the one win, but they've picked up a couple of draws as well. So they've got five points on the board for the minus three goal difference from those last six games. So much to say, no doubt, from the Liverpool manager. Let's hear from him. Here's Jurgen Klopp. But Luis Diaz coming off the bench, scoring your equaliser. How special a moment for him, for you, his family and everybody in this difficult time. Oh, it's a wonderful moment, but it didn't, doesn't change the situation yet. So the most important thing is that his father gets released, so we don't have to make that now. But it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. He wanted to be here, and he gets that. Um, but um, that, that's it then. It's for us super important goal, and for him very important, of course. And yes, very emotional, but that's it. It's a big call for a coach to make when somebody's in that situation. But did you have a sense, you know your players better than anybody, that he might just be the man for you to look to, that something special could happen. Yeah, he always can do that. When he's, uh, um, when he's on the pitch, he's always uh, involved in special things, uh, especially this season as well. Um, so, yeah, of course, we knew that he uh, will be a threat. We didn't know exactly how long he can play because he only had a few sessions with the team. Um, but that's all fine. It's, it's uh, really That's not the important part today. He, he scored that goal. That's wonderful. But then we need still, still some improvement in Colombia. Looking at the game on a wider level, you spoke to us very clearly beforehand about how difficult you thought this would be, but it, did it turn out to be bigger task than you thought? Yeah, so um, credit to, to Luton, how they defend, how they set it up, of course, but it was mainly up to us. We had a lot of chances and we should have had much more. Um, the goalie had a few saves to make, but not too many from close range, more from a bit of a wider, um, bigger distance. Um, yeah, 
it's it's a tricky task to 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 stay fully concentrated and we had i think the first half one of the biggest chances is um Ryan um, with the ball slalom through the, um, their their lines and then the ball to Diogo and then Diogo like in a rush usually one touch control the ball next one far corner done but we had of these moments where we were not clear enough not 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 convinced enough um, we had too many to 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 bring the game in a different direction. So like it was, I don't know even the numbers yet, um, but what we had on possession and stuff like this. Um, but it's now not that we defended the set piece as well, which is difficult. They didn't have a lot of um, finishes, but we had a decisive one. Uh, we, we, I think it was set piece for us. We lose that second ball at their box, and then it's then it's clear, and it's well played, and for us really difficult. So they won it up, and then it's obviously fine. I think um, if you want to look at the game, we didn't deserve more than a point tonight. So that's how just how we could have won the game, and we should have won. But now with all the chances we missed or we didn't create, that was the, the result we deserved. And I think then what uh, the result that Luton deserves as well. Uh, it was a good atmosphere. Um, everything was there. Uh, we should have done better. So what were the chances they had, especially those ones we saw in the second half? They should have won, shouldn't they, Robbie? Why didn't they? Because they were wasteful. And because, um, and by the way, that's kind of honest from Jurgen Klopp there. He said we didn't deserve a point. Mm. I mean, that's at Luton Town. I mean, the, 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 the difference in financial power of these two is incredible and fair play to Luton Town. I felt at the first half, I said it at half time, felt they were a little off it, like intensity, driving at the game, put them away, like really, really put them under serious pressure. Didn't see that. The second half goes on and on and on. And the miss from Darwin Nunez is insane. Like, it's two yards out. It's on a volley. He's got to score that. And if, if you don't take those sort of chances, they're always likely to give up a chance and fair pedal loot in town. They were a threat on the current attack. It wasn't just sitting in, which I thought it might be for most of the game. They came out a few times, but I thought there was a little bit of casual, a little bit of complacency and wasteful finishing. That's the story for me. Tim, the other side of the coin, Luton Town, did today's yeah. performance and result maybe start to think, change your mind about whether or not they can stay up? Um, no, but I think there's, there's some fight there. And, and they're going to have more days like this. We, we talked before the game. In order for a Luton to compete on a day with Liverpool, they're going to have to get a bit lucky. And they did with the referee. Um, Liverpool didn't take their chances. As Musty said, they were, they were wasteful. You're going to have to run your socks off, roll your sleeves up, be resolute and defend. If all of that comes together, you might get some results. Now, what they have to do is be able to do that every single week. And that's difficult because ultimately they, they lack a little bit of quality. But in the front end, we saw they have some players that if they do the dirty work, they have the opportunity to get some goals, make, some, make it difficult on teams. But I still don't know if they have enough. Agree. Well, mostly. But I still they, they've got a good fighting chance. I mean, like other teams that promoted, they're finding a new team. This first team now is settling in, bedding in. This is the team now. There's a little bit of threat there. At a buy off the bench, gives them good options. The defence is kind of set. I like the, the wide players, the wing players. They might just scry, scrap and fight enough points at the Kenny to, uh, to stay in the division. Yeah, they're outside the bottom three mm. right now. Earlier on today, Nottingham Forest took on Aston Villa for our 2% of 90 highlights presented by Wells Fargo. Let's show you the goals, Tim. First of all, 1-0 after just five minutes. Yeah, and Alain is being good. You see him here just blistering pace past, past Matty Cash. Just sets it back. Follow, and then oh, I, you know, I mean, wow. Outside the box. Side puts it on past and Martinez 1-0. Into the second half, just two minutes in, it's two. Yeah, and, and kind of similarly, a player comes into the midfield right in the centre of the field for them. Oral Mangala this time, the holding midfield pair. Good power, it's a good strike, should never be a goal from there for me. I mean, uh, Martinez is right behind it and just mistimes the, the hand onto the ball. I think he's just trying to deflect it over the top, he gets it wrong, it goes in, and that is a really impressive victory for Nottingham Forest. Those are our 2% of 90 highlights, sponsored by the Wells Fargo Active Cash credit card that is real life ready. Well, home and away when it comes to Nottingham Forest is stark. 24 home matches since the start of last season, 10 wins, 39 points. Look at the away form since the start of last season. Just two wins in 25, just 12 points on the board, and the goal difference is hefty as well. Let's hear, though, post-match after that big win from Steve Cooper. To get these three points, to perform like that in front of your home fans against big, high-flying opposition, mm. whilst it's fairly early in the season, does it feel like it could be a bit of a big moment if we look at the narrative and how things might unfold? 
we don't look too far ahead. Um, you know, I, I talk openly about you know um, we're we're trying to grow so many parts of the club, including the team. You know, we still got loads of new players. Players are still finding their feet in how I want them to play and here at the city ground, and um, and that will take uh, that will take time. It's only our second season back in back in the league, and you really have to earn the right to to belong here. And we're very much still in that process. So um, we're taking it game by game, day by day. To be honest, really believing in in the plan, enjoying. Um, the journey that we've been on the last couple of years, but knowing that it's only going to get harder. And um, um, if we can show levels of, of, of some of our play today and, and attitude and commitment, and um, you know, we know we can grow this club, but it's a lot, a lot of hard work, you know. So, and um, what I can never doubt with, with the players or the staff is how committed they are to the football club, and um, you know, that's a good starting point. So, um, day by day, we, everyone loves being here. It's a special football club. But we've got a lot of work to do, you know. We, we we go about things a little bit differently at times, and it's going to take while, a little while to really establish ourselves in in this league, and and that's hoping that we get there. But that's certainly what we want to do. They're trying to improve, trying to move up the table, but they stay right now in the bottom half, but up to 12th position, which is a big leap from where they were this morning. 13 points on the ball for Steve Cooper's men. Chelsea just below them, but with a chance to change that tomorrow when they go to Tottenham. Further down, your screen is where you'll see Luton out of the bottom three now, replacing them are Bournemouth. And there is a big gap. There's a five-point gap between Everton in 16th and Luton in 17th. At the moment, it's those four clubs at the bottom who are struggling the most, with Sheffield United propping the rest up on goal difference. Top of the table, Manchester City lead Tottenham by a point. That could change tomorrow if Tottenham beat Chelsea. Liverpool in third, Arsenal drop down to fourth. Then there's a two-point gap to Villa. Newcastle two points further back from Villa. Brighton, Manchester United in eighth, and Brentford and Palace cracking that top half. That was your Premier League update. So tomorrow we'll... Hi there, I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch more videos all season long. And for even more Premier League content, from original series to live matches, head over to Peacock. And be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend on USA Network and on Peacock. We will see you there.